Welcome to this tutorial we are doing here on our pelvis, focusing on our coxal bone. Now our coxal bone is going to be made up of three uh, features, but our pelvis also includes our sacrum and coccyx, and we'll have a quick look at that as well, but mainly focusing on the coxal bone of our pelvis. Uh, before we get started here, let's figure out what we're looking at. We have an anterior view of our pelvis, so looking from the front. And the first bone I'm going to highlight here in green is our sacrum. Sacrum being part of the vertebral column that we discussed in the spine video. Now our sacrum is going to be uh, unique in the fact that it is made of five bones that are fused together. And these will uh, fuse together and form one single bone during uh, adolescence into your late 20s. So five bones here all fused into one in adulthood. And the sacrum only has a few features that we really need to know at this stage. And they are the sacral promontory. Uh, the sacral promontory is located on the anterior border of the first sacral vertebrae. I'm just highlighting here. And we are also going to find the body's center of gravity just posteriorly to this point. So if uh, I just draw it up on here, so we've got our center of gravity and I'll just draw it now. So the majority of weight through our body is going to be going through this point. And once again, that's just posterior to that sacral promontory, which is going to be articulating with our last lumbar vertebrae. And the last structure we need to know about on the sacrum is the base of the sacrum located here, which is a, a fairly uh, broad and a flat surface of bone on that first sacral vertebrae. Moving on to quickly look at our coccyx now. Our coccyx just highlighted there in yellow. The coccyx is going to have a minor role in supporting the organs of the pelvic cavity, but apart from this, it is an almost useless bone and sometimes may even need to be removed in certain individuals that it's uh, too long. And we also call it our tail bone. Now that we've covered our sacrum and coccyx, we can focus on the coxal bone. So as I said at the beginning of the video, the coxal bone is made of three components or three bones that are fused together. The first of which being our ilium. Now I'll highlight the ilium here in uh, pink. So this is our ilium here, and it's the largest of our three coxal bones. And it's going to have a few unique features of its own as well. The first being the iliac fossa. The iliac fossa being a depression on the anterior side of this bone that's going to act as a point of tendon attachment. So tendon attachment will be in this iliac fossa. And I'll just point out quickly as well, one uh, joint that we have in the pelvis that's not actually fused like the rest of the coxal bones is the sacroiliac joint. So the point of attachment or articulation between the sacrum here and our iliac bone or the ilium bone and there's going to be a ligament attachment in there as well, uh, joining those two bones together. So I'll write that down here now as well. That is going to be a point of ligament attachment and articulation. The second bone that makes up our coxal bone is our pubic bone or pubis. So second bone of our coxal bone, and it's going to have a unique feature as well. I'll just highlight the pubic bone here in the purple. So that's our pubic bone there. And the feature that we're going to find on our pubic bone is called the pubic crest. And the pubic crest I'm just outlining here on either side. So there our pubic crest there and they're going to be a point of tendon attachment. So we're going to have muscles attaching to this protuberance on the pubic bone. Now I'm running out of room here, so what I'm gonna do is quickly clear up some room on the top here so we can cover the whole pelvis in uh, one video. So there we go, I've made some room. And the final piece of our coxal bone that we're going to find interacting with our ilium and pubic bone is the ischium. 
I've highlighted the ischium here in this teal kind of color. So it's the third bone that makes up our coxal bone. And the unique feature that we're going to find on the ischium is called the ischial spine. The ischial spine we will see on the our posterior surface and it's a kind of triangular shaped elevation just like this and it's a point of ligament and tendon attachment. So ligament and tendon attachment and that makes up the three bones of our coxal bone and they're all fused together. So the ilium, the pubic bone and the ischium. And now we can have a look at our last few features here of our pelvis, starting with the pubic symphysis. Now the pubic symphysis is a cartilaginous joint that we'll find here. So it separates the two segments of the pubic bone. So a cartilaginous joint and it's made out of fibrocartilage. So fibrocartilage. Now this joint only allows a very small amount of movement, so we classify it as amphiarthrotic, although it can become uh, more movable during childbirth. The next structure we're going to see is our acetabulum. The acetabulum we're going to see outlined here in yellow, and it is a depression in the coxal bone which comprises segments of all three of the bones that make up our coxal bone and the area in which the head of our femur will insert here to create our hip joint. So it articulates with our femur and it's going to form our hip joint. The last actual feature we're going to look at is called the obturator foramen. Now the obturator foramen is a hole in the bone between where our pubic bone and ischium join together. So the obturator foramen. And the obturator foramen is actually the largest foramen in the body. So you can see it going through here. And it's a point that's going to allow the passage of nerves and blood vessels. So nerves and blood vessels are going to go through this foramen. We actually have a nerve called the obturator nerve which is going to run through this foramen. Now the last structure we're going to look at in this video is something called our pubic arch. Now the pubic arch is actually very important in forensics and being able to tell a skeleton apart from being male or female. So we've got the pubic arch here, say a triangle shape, and a wider triangle indicates that the skeleton is usually female and a narrower angle at that point will indicate that the skeleton is male. So I'll draw that up here as well. So we've got this wide angle indicating that this skeleton here is more than likely a female and if the pubic bone was to be uh, compressed into a tighter angle here it would indicate that the skeleton was more than likely a male. So I'll put M, this angle would be male, and this wider angle would be for a female. And with that we've covered all of the basic features of our pelvis and coxal bone that we're going to need to uh, know in Anatomy 1. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.